Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike, piloting Legacy Winota. This is a prison deck that tries to land an early threat before cheating stacks pieces to lock down the game. Mike's opening hand contains the City of Traitors, Plateau, Seasoned Dungeoneer, Simeon Spirit Guide, Lotus Petal, Goblin Rabble Master, and Alalia the Blade Reforged. Next, we have our Mox Ruby Patron Zack, pouting Elf Control. This deck is a classic Legacy Elves shell that also controls the board and wins through combat. Zack's opening hand contains the Lair of the Hydra, Dryad Arbor, Misty Rainforest, Once Upon a Time, Ignoble Hierarch, Fiend Artisan, and an Atraxa Grand Unifier. Without further ado, let's kick off this silly sassy swinging soiree. Mike ejected the warp core and gets to start us off. Mike plays the City of Traitors as his land for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He sacrifices Petal to help cast Lelia, the Blade Reforged. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Lelia. Lelia triggers. Mike exiles a Lotus Petal off of the top of his library, giving Lelia a plus one plus one counter. Zack takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Lotus Petal from exile. All through, he gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws a cast once upon a time for free since it's the first spell of the game. He looks at the top five cards of his library, putting Guy's Cradle into his hand. He plays a Lair of the Hydra. He casts Ignoble Hierarch and passes the turn. Mike draws and exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He sacrifices Lotus Petal to help cast Seasoned Dungeoneer. Dungeoneer enters and Mike gains the initiative. He ventures into the Undercity, fetching up a Plains into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Lelia. Seasoned Dungeoneer and Lelia trigger. Dungeoneer gives Lelia protection from creatures and Mike explores, revealing an Arid Mesa into his hand. Mike then exiles Chalice of the Void off of the top of his library through Lelia and Lelia gets another counter. Zack takes the damage and Mike ships the turn. Zack draws and casts a Noble Hierarch. He plays a Guy's Cradle for turn. He casts Fiend Artisan. He passes the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the Lost Well, scrying two. He draws for turn and plays a Plateau. City of Traders triggers, Mike floats two, then sacrifices it. He casts a Goblin Rabble Master. He moves to combat, Rabble Master triggers, and Mike creates a 1-1 Goblin. He attacks Zack with Lelia, Seasoned Dungeoneer, and the Goblin. Seasoned Dungeoneer and Lelia trigger. Lelia gains protection from creatures, and Mike explores, revealing Legion War Boss into his graveyard. Lelia triggers and gets a counter. Then he exiles a Legion War Boss off of the top of his library through Lelia and gives her another counter. Zack takes the hit, and with nothing else, Mike ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Dryad Arbor. He activates Fiend Artisan, sacrificing Dryad Arbor, where X equals 3. He fetches up a Grist, the Hunger Tide, onto the battlefield. He activates Grist's second ability, sacrificing Fiend Artisan, destroying Seasoned Dungeoneer. He gives the turn back to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the stash and creates a treasure. He draws for turn and plays a Plateau. He casts a Goblin Rabble Master. He moves to combat, both Rabble Masters trigger, and he creates two more Goblins. He attacks Zack with everything. Lelia triggers, and Mike exiles a Chrome Mox off of the top of his library, giving Lelia a counter. Zack, overwhelmed by attacks, dies, and Mike wins the game. Before game two, Mike moves the sideboard. He adds in four Fury because of its strength against small creatures. He removes four Chalice of the Void. Zack also moves the sideboard. He adds in a Shriek Maw and a Plague Engineer for added creature and token removal. He removes Bajooka Bog and Endurance since Graveyard Hate isn't as needed. 
In this game, Zack's opening hand contains a Green Sun Zenith, Ignoble Hierarch, Noble Hierarch, Endurance, Natural Order, Bayou, and a Once Upon a Time. Mike's opening hand contains a Plateau, Ancient Tomb, Legion War Boss, Goblin Rabble Master, Chrome Mox, Winota Joiner of Forces, and his London Mulligan is a Plateau. And Zack gets to start us off. Zack casts Once Upon a Time for free since it's the first spell of the game. He looks at the top 5 cards of his library and reveals a Shriek Maw into his hand, bottoming the rest. He plays a Bayou as his land for turn. He casts an Ignoble Hierarch. Zack passes. Mike draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Goblin Rabble Master. He taps Ancient Tomb to help cast Legion War Boss. He moves to combat, Legion War Boss triggers, and Mike creates a Goblin. He attacks Zack with the Goblin. Zack takes the hit, and Mike ships the turn. Zack draws and casts an Elvish Reclaimer. He casts a Noble Hierarch. He gives the turn back to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Plateau. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Winota, Joiner of Forces. He moves to combat, Legion War Boss triggers, and Mike creates another 1 1 Goblin. He attacks Zack with War Boss and two Goblins. Winota triggers three times and Legion War Boss triggers. War Boss mentors one of the Goblins, giving it a plus one plus one counter. Then Winota's triggers resolve. Mike looks at the top six, putting Seasoned Dungeoneer onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking Zack. Dungeoneer enters, Mike takes the initiative and ventures into the Undercity, fetching up a mountain into his hand. Mike looks at the next six, failing to find. He looks at the last six, putting another Seasoned Dungeoneer onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Dungeoneer enters, Mike ventures into the Forge, putting two 1 1 counters onto his Goblin. Zack declares no blocks, takes the damage, and Mike passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a forest. He casts Natural Order, sacrificing Noble Hierarch as an additional cost. He fetches up an Atraxa, Grand Unifier, onto the battlefield. Atraxa enters, Zack reveals the top 10 cards of his library, putting Misty Rainforest, Ignoble Hierarch, and a Once Upon a Time into his hand. With nothing else, he gives the turn back to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the Trap Room and Zack loses 5 life. Mike draws and moves to combat. Legion War Boss triggers and Mike creates a Goblin. He attacks Zack with everything. Winota triggers 4 times and Legion War Boss triggers. War Boss mentors the new Goblin, giving it a counter. Then Winota's triggers resolve. Mike looks at the top 6, putting Caves of Chaos Adventurer onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Adventurer enters and Mike ventures into the archives, drawing a card. He looks at the next 6, putting Blood Boil Sorcerer onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Sorcerer enters and Mike ventures into the Throne of the Dead 3. He reveals the top 10 cards of his library and puts Fury onto the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Fury enters, killing both Elvish Reclaimer and Ignoble Hierarch. Mike looks at the next 6 and puts another Winota onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking, sacrificing the original. Then Mike looks at the final 6, failing to find. The waves come crashing over Zack, killing him, and Mike wins the match. Zack, knowing his deck hasn't had a chance to shine, decides to go for another round, so they reset and play another match. In this game, Mike's opening hand contains a Chalice of the Void, Chrome Mox, Plains, Simeon Spirit Guide, Blood Boil Sorcerer, Goblin Rabble Master, and his London Mulligan is a Chrome Mox. In this game, Zack's opening hand contains an Ignoble Hierarch, Snuff Out, Guy's Cradle, Vernon Catacombs, and his London Mulligans are Noble Hierarch, Misty Rainforest, and Allosaurus Shepherd. And Mike gets to start us off. Mike plays a Plains as his land for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Blood Boil Sorcerer. He casts Chalice of the Void, where X equals 1. Mike ships the turn. Zack draws and casts Once Upon a Time for free since it's the first spell of the game. He looks at the top 5, putting Collector Oof into his hand. He plays a Vernon Catacombs and passes the turn. Mike draws and casts a Lotus Petal. He sacrifices Petal to help cast Goblin Rabble Master. Mike attempts to move to combat and, in response, Zack cracks Vernon Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He pays 4 life to cast Snuff Out for its alternate cost, destroying Goblin Rabble Master. With nothing else, Mike gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws, plays a Guy's Cradle, and passes the turn. Mike draws, plays a Plateau, and ships the turn back to Zack. Zack draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Zack reminds everyone to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to be notified of when we publish more. Mike draws and plays a City of Traders. He casts Simeon Spirit Guide and gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays an Allosaurus Shepherd. Chalice of the Void triggers, but Shepherd can't be countered. He casts an Ignoble Hierarch. Chalice triggers again, but Hierarch can't be countered now. Zack plays a Guy's Cradle, sacrificing his other Cradle. He casts a Collector Oof. All through, he ends his turn. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Simeon Spirit Guide. Zack takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike casts a Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Adventurer enters, and Mike takes the initiative. He ventures into the Undercity, fetching up a mountain into his hand. He passes the turn. Zack draws and casts Fiend Artisan. He ships the turn back to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the Lost Well, scrying two. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Adventurer triggers, and Mike exiles Chalice of the Void off of the top of his library. Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Chalice of the Void from Exile, where X equals 2. He plays a mountain for turn, sacrificing City of Traitors. He gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a forest. He activates the Fiend Artisan, where X equals 3, sacrificing Allosaur Shepherd. He fetches up a Grist, the Hunger Tide, onto the battlefield. He activates Grist's first ability, milling Green Sun Zenith and creating a 1-1 Insect. He passes the turn to Mike. 
During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the stash and creates a treasure. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with both of his creatures. Adventurer triggers and Mike exiles Goblin Rabble Master off at the top of his library. Zack takes it and in his second main phase, Mike casts Goblin Rabble Master from exile. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming human as it enters. He ships the turn. Zack draws and activates Grist's first ability. He mills a Fiend Artisan and creates a 1-1 Insect. He casts Noble Hierarch. He casts Crater Hoof Behemoth. Behemoth enters and Zack's creatures get plus 7 plus 7 and gain trample. He moves to combat, attacks Mike with everything, killing him, and Zack wins the game. Before game 2, Mike moves the sideboard. He again puts in 4 Fury. He removes 4 Chalice of the Void. Zack also moves the sideboard. He puts in Shriek Maw and Plague Engineer for added creature and token removal. He removes Urza Saga and Bajuka Bog. In this game, Mike's opening hand can take the Plateau, Chrome Mox, Blood Boil Sorcerer, Lelia the Blade Reforged, Caves of Chaos Adventurer, Lotus Petal, and an Ancient Tomb. In this game, Zack's opening hand contains an Endurance, Forest, Fiend Artisan, Once Upon a Time, Ignoble Hierarch, Natural Order, and a Snuff Out. And Mike gets to start us off. Mike plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Blood Boil Sorcerer. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Lelia the Blade Reforged. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Lelia. Lelia triggers and Mike exiles Seasoned Dungeoneer off of the top of his library, giving Lelia a plus one plus one counter. Zack takes the damage and Mike passes the turn. Zack draws and casts Once Upon a Time for free since it's his first spell of the game. He looks at the top five, putting Plague Engineer into his hand. He plays Lair of the Hydra as his land for turn. He casts Ignoble Hierarch. Zack passes. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Lelia. Lelia triggers and Mike exiles Chrome Mox off of the top of his library, giving Lelia another counter. Zack takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike plays a Plateau. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Adventurer enters, Mike takes the initiative, venturing into the Undercity and fetching up a mountain into his hand. All through, Mike ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Forest. He casts Fiend Artisan. He casts an Allosaur Shepherd. He passes the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the Forge, putting two plus one plus one counters onto Caves of Chaos Adventurer. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Lelia and Adventurer. Adventurer and Lelia trigger. Mike exiles City of Traders off of the top of his library through Lelia, giving Lelia another counter. Then Mike exiles Simeon's Spirit Guide off of the top through Adventurer. Lelia triggers again and gets another counter. Zack blocks Lelia with the Allosaur Shepherd. Shepherd dies and Zack takes the rest. In his second main phase, Mike plays City of Traders from Exile. He casts Simeon Spirit Guide from Exile. With his combat engine online, Mike gives a turn to Zack. Zack draws and casts Plague Engineer, choosing Spirit as it enters. He ships the turn. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the trap room and Zack loses 5 life. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with everything. Adventurer and Lelia trigger. He exiles a Legion War Boss off of the top of his library through Lelia and Lelia gains another counter. He then exiles Winota off of the top of his library through Adventure and Lelia gains another counter. The damage is too much for Zack to hold back, he dies, and Mike wins the game. Before Game 3, Zack moves to sideboard. He adds in 4 Thoughtseize for hand disruption. He removes 3 Endurance and a Grist. Mike has no sideboard changes. In this game, Zack's opening hand contains a Forest, Once Upon a Time, Ignoble Hierarch, Fiend Artisan, and his London Mulligans are Noble Hierarch, Ignoble Hierarch, and a Dryad Arbor. Mike's opening hand contains two Caves of Chaos Adventurer, Simeon Spirit Guide, Chrome Mox, Legion War Boss, City of Traders, and a Mountain, and Zack gets to start us off. Zack casts Once Upon a Time for free since it's his first spell of the game. He looks at the top five, putting Bayou into his hand. He plays a Bayou for turn. He casts Ignoble Hierarch. He passes the turn. Mike draws and plays a City of Traders. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Simeon Spirit Guide. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red, and casts Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Adventurer enters and Mike takes the initiative. He ventures into the Undercity and fetches up a Plains into his hand. He ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and casts Thoughtseize. Mike reveals his hand, discards Caves of Chaos Adventurer, and Zack loses two life. He plays a Forest as his land for turn. He casts a Fiend Artisan. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the forge, putting two plus one plus one counter onto his adventurer. He draws and casts a Legion War Boss. He moves to combat, War Boss triggers, and Mike creates a goblin. He attacks Zack with the adventurer and the goblin. Adventurer triggers, and Mike exiles Fury off of the top of his library. Zack takes the hit, and in his second main phase, Mike evokes Fury from exile, exiling him in Spirit Guide. Fury enters, kills both of Zack's creatures, and Fury is sacrificed. Mike plays a Plains for turn, sacrificing City of Traders. With nothing else, Mike passes the turn to Zack. Zack draws, casts an Allosaur Shepherd, and ships the turn. During his upkeep, Mike ventures into the trap and Zack loses 5 life. He draws and moves to combat. Warboss triggers and he creates another 1-1 Goblin. He attacks Zack with everything. Zack sees the writing on the wall, scoops up his cards, and Mike wins the match. Ladies and gentlemen, what an amazing pair of matches tonight. In match 1, Mike showed off the power of his initiative creatures mixed with the overwhelming force of Goblins to trigger Winota's ability. Cheating humans into play was just the nail in the coffin for Zack. In the second match, Zack was able to fight back with an early snuff out that helped slow down game one.
he played through two Chalice of the Voids to land a Crater Hoof to seal the win. But in games 2 and 3, Mike showed just how resilient his deck really is. Mike's creatures, mixed with card advantage adventure effects, was just too much for Zack to handle. Most valuable card in tonight's matches, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Lelia, the Blade Reforge. This card gets out of control so quickly when it lands. It has haste, grows with each turn, and is a good source of card advantage. If you don't kill this creature on sight, it will kill you in very short fashion. We hope you enjoyed this legacy match. Would you have played something differently? What would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.